The Texas state legislature has opened a new special session on Saturday. Texas Governor Greg Abbott made the announcement Thursday. The state's controversial voting bill is on the agenda again. That is what prompted Democrats to walk out of the regular session back in May and to flee the state to Washington, D.C. in protest last month. Many of the Democratic lawmakers are still there, and the voting bill would impose new requirements that many argue would make it harder to vote. So as this new session opens, it begins with another standoff. Democrats are preventing quorum again. For more on this, I want to bring in State Representative Carl Sherman. He's a Democratic member of the Texas House of Representatives for District 109. And, Representative, you are one of the lawmakers that is currently in Washington. How long do you plan to stay, and do you have any plans to go back to Texas at this point? Well, thank you for uh, covering this important issue. You know, I've got to tell you, we are fully invested in what Congressman John Lewis would call good trouble. Uh, we must fight to protect the voting rights for uh, all Americans, and our democracy is in danger. This is not even about just Texas. This is not a Texas bill. As we've been here fighting for our democracy, what we've found is across the U.S., especially in southern states, this is a continuation of our long history of uh, suppressing or developing anti-voter bills. And it's interesting to me how we remember the original sin, but we seem to have amnesia when it comes to the original sinful laws uh, that were birthed from purity of the ballot box belief, a belief that voting should be a privilege and not a right. And we just believe that it is a right to be able to vote as an American citizen. And so we're determined uh, to remain uh, steadfast and unmovable in our fight to ensure that Americans have the right to participate in our elections without the barriers of partisan politics. So as you know, the governor has said that he's just going to continue to order these special sessions, um, you know, and he has promised to arrest uh, you and your colleagues if you return to the state of Texas. Of course, Texas doesn't have jurisdiction where you are right now. But what is your reaction to this ongoing feud to, to the governor ordering another second special session? Well, as I said, uh, we have a long history of uh, a anti-voter uh, legislation uh, process throughout this country, especially in the South. And I believe that he is determined. Again, this is not really a Texas bill. When you saw us walk out during the regular session, uh, we stopped uh, some dangerous provisions in the bill uh, that would have prevented Christians from being able to vote on Sunday morning and only to hear Republicans later uh, say that it was a clerical era, it was a Scribner's era, uh, that that time was not right uh, in the original bill. And so they changed it. And they also removed uh, the provision that allowed for individuals to simply allege that there was fraud uh, and they could overturn an election. Uh, we must be steadfast in our commitment to our democracy. Voting is just uh, fundamental for our system, and uh, every voice should be heard. So, Representative, there's such a uh, disagreement here, you know, and uh, with some Democrats that are returning to Texas and some are staying in Washington, uh, we know the strategy is kind of in flux, but uh, what is the end game here? What is the strategy for the caucus? And how do you think this standoff ends? You know, I, I pray to God uh, that this standoff ends the same way that it did uh, over 50 years ago. You know, Lucy Baines Johnson, the daughter of President Lyndon B. Johnson, came and met with us here in D.C. And she expressed to us the long, long journey that it took to get to the point uh, where her father signed the Voters' Rights Act of 1965. I think we are at that moment now uh, that we need the president, we need the Congress, we need the Senate to act boldly because our democracy is in jeopardy and we need Congress to act now. It's not unlike my ancestors who had to cross the Mason-Dixon line. That's what we've had to do here is to come 
to D.C. and ask for D.C. to pass universal uh, voters' laws that will protect all citizens of America. And, you know, lawmakers in Washington are now uh, headed out of town pretty soon, so I imagine that you're settling in to stay for a while. What is it like to be away from your home state, from your family, from your friends for that long? You know, it's very difficult. Uh, I talked to my wife just before this show. We've celebrated our 34th wedding anniversary on July 15th. I was here. She was there. It's the first time we've ever uh, been apart on that day. Uh, but we're all, uh, you know, understanding that this is nothing compared to what our ancestors had to go through. So we will remain focused on uh, passing legislation uh, here in the U.S. to protect all voters, whether they are disabled or people of color. Uh, everyone should have the right to vote without fear of intimidation, without poll watchers, partisan poll watchers being empowered uh, to intimidate uh, individuals as they go to vote. And so we're, we're in this, and whether it's in D.C., or eventually back at the state capitol. It's my prayer that uh, legislators would open their hearts and understand uh, that there is no time for us to be concerned about power. Uh, we should just represent the people and not try to gerrymander districts and pick who our uh, voters are as opposed to allowing voters to pick who their representatives are. Representative, we're having this conversation on the 56th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act. I know you are certainly aware of that, and it sounds like what happened uh, 56 years ago, the sacrifices that were made then, gives you a lot of energy in this fight. It does. You know, when I realized that my forefathers uh, had dogs sicked on them, had fire hydrants uh, unleashed on them, uh, just for the right to be heard, to have their vote count. Uh, I understand that those sacrifices cannot be in vain, and we must be resilient uh, to protect uh, the voters and protect their right to participate in our democracy. You know, if this bill were to pass, uh, it would mean people that now have people that have disabilities who are able to place their stamp as their signature on their ballot uh, will not be able to do that. The law literally says that they must sign in ink uh, their name. Well, some of these individuals do not have hands uh, to be able to sign their name, uh, but they still participate in our elections. And so voting shouldn't be a privilege. It's a right, and every voice should be heard. Texas State Representative Carl Sherman speaking to us from Washington. Representative Sherman, thank you. Thank you, Bradley. Thank you for covering this very important matter.